Okay, so I had several people ask me about question number 10 on your day 7. So I decided to post a video so that you can watch this at home and, um, and kind of break down the information that I'm going to teach you. Okay, um, I know a lot of these day problems are combining different, um, uh, different steps. So it's always good, guys. If you have a question and, and, and I can post a video about it, let me know and I will. Uh, so I wanted to break down problem number 10. Problem number 10 has, again, several questions, and that involve the box plot. Now, box plot is, is, I've already posted some of the videos, and some of you have asked me during class, in regards to what each individual section means. Okay, so I'm not going to post a video about the box plot, per se, but I will refer to some of the vocabulary words that I had already posted. Okay? Um, so the first question is, what percentage of the data points fall in the range of 130 to 132.5. Now, um, here you're dealing with percent. Okay, so I know I'm going to compare the range to percent, okay, and, and there, you can do this several ways. The most uh, comfortable way for me to do it, and I've been teaching it to you as well in class, is to teach it to you through proportions, okay? So before I get started on that, let me kind of break down the what the question is asking. And it's also asking for the range. Now the range, think of the range as the distance between one point and another. You know, if I was gonna, if I was gonna throw a football and I wanted to see how far I could throw it, I, wanted, I would be able to, I would wanna find out what my range is, okay? And using that same idea with the data points, um, you look at a starting point and all the way to the finish. Okay, so in this case, from 130 to 132.5, the data, it spreads how much? 2.5. So the range from here to here is 2.5. Okay? Uh, so it wants to know what percent is the 2.5 from the whole thing. So what is the range of the whole thing? Well, you got to look at where it started, so 130, and it goes all the way to 150. So what is my range? 150 minus 130. So 150 minus 130, here's my start, here's my finish, here's how much the data spreads. Here's how much the data um, expands, if you want to think about it like that. Okay, so how much percent is 2.5 from the 20 points it spreads, okay? And I told you that I was gonna, when I was gonna look at the problem, I was gonna look at it as a proportion. So I'm gonna compare it to percent, and I know that's, that's out of 100, okay? If I don't know what percent it is, I could always use an X, okay, or a variable. Um, these types of problems, again, involve different, different uh, concepts, but nevertheless, um, you always want to refer back to the original question, okay? I want to know how much percentage the 2.5 is from the entire spread, because it's asking what percent of the data points fall within here, okay? So, then I would just solve my proportion by using the cross method, okay? So I have 2.5 times 100 20 okay then I just expand it 250 when you actually multiply 2.5 times 100 Okay, you do opposite operation. What's opposite of multiplying times 20? You divide by 20. You divide by 20. Um, and then you just put your answer. Now I'm just gonna move it up so that it, you can see it good in the camera. Um, so if I divide it, how many times 20 going to 250? Oh, 
of t. Equals x, so I know that my data points only fall within 12% of the whole thing. Okay, now notice, and I'm going to refer back to the box plot. Notice that if 12.5 was my answer, it only represents a little section of the whole thing. And that is the uh, biggest, um, I guess, visual understanding of the problem that I can give you. My answer only represents that, that these data points only fall within a small section of the whole entire thing. Does that make sense? Now, when you do the same um, process for the second question, then you're going to notice that the percentage is much different. Now, uh, I'm not going to go into that particular problem because I just wanted to break down the math. But if you follow the same process for the range of this one, which is about 1 point, uh, what is it? 7.5, something like that. It's referring to 142.5, which is start trend here, all the way to 150. Okay? And that's going to give you a different percent. Okay? But nevertheless, the right answer. So the data points for this question fall only within 12% of the whole thing. There we talked about the word range, representing how far the data spreads. And we also talked about proportions and comparing them to percent. Remember what I've been teaching you from day one is percents in, in reality is nothing more than an idea until you compare it to something else. Okay? That's where you get proportions. The proportion is the comparison of those two ratios. Okay? Um, and then I'm just going to skip this question because that's the question that you can do just following the same process but with a different range. It says, what is that? It's referring to the inner quartile, okay? Okay, so I decided to search, guys, what the IQR was. And the IQR is just uh, the inner quartile. If you look at the other box plot videos, um, I explained to you what the first quartile is and what the third quartile are. And the first quartile is the median between the starting point and the actual median okay so it's like the first middle point of those two sets of data the third quartile is the same thing but now you're looking at the median of the data the middle number and the end and you look at that middle number so that's that's what it refers to the, the first quartile and the third quartile now what the inner quartile is it's the subtraction between the third and the first okay and I went ahead I went ahead and looked at Google just to make sure that that uh, I had the vocabulary word right and, and that I was teaching you the right information, okay? Um, I, I can't go into debt as far as first quartile and third quartile goes, but I encourage you to look at the other videos, at the box plot videos, um, so that you can, you can see um, what I'm talking about there. Um, again, the focus of this particular problem was just to look at it through the percent, of not necessarily the inner quartile. Um, but again, if any of this is, is confusing to you or you don't understand something, just feel free to email me, guys, or ask me during class, and I can help you out. Um, again, like always, uh, my email is arpacheco at canotinoisd.org, and I respond as fast as you email me. Give me about, about an hour or two, and I'll respond right back if I'm not busy. Um, I'll either send you a video or I'll, I'll, I'll do something like this with my voiceover, I mean, there's a tons of things of way or tons of ways that I can help you. Um, just contact me, and and I hope this video helped. Thank you very much.